Hello, everyone. Welcome. If you could just give us one moment to get our camera started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking Connected. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We're all excited you're here today with us. Uh, joining me today is Sajwa and Julia. Both Sajwa and I are program coordinators with the University of Minnesota Cooking Matters program. And also joining us today is one of our Cooking Matters volunteers, Julia. So normally a Cooking Matters class is a nutrition-based six-week cooking class um, that meets in person. Classes usually feature a nutrition educator and a chef that work together um, to uh, cook a recipe together as well as learn a little bit about nutrition. So today we're going to follow that same format and we are going to be making a Thai pasta salad. Uh, we'd like to thank the creator of the recipe. Um, it is Angela with CountsOfTheWorld.com. So thank you, Angela, for this amazing recipe. We are excited to try it in today's Cooking Connected. Uh, today, Sajwa will be our chef and Julia will be our nutrition educator. And just like every week, we do have a survey for you guys to take. Um, so after this video, if you could please take our survey, it just helps us get our videos a little bit better every time um, and helps us to continue our work in the community. So for this survey, you will need a program code, which I have right here. Uh, this week's program code is E09793. Uh, you will find the program code as well as the link to our survey in the live chat, as well as in the description box of our videos. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Chef Sajwa uh, to get today's recipe started. Take it away, ladies. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you for the introduction there. Um, yep, everybody, we are going to be doing a Thai pasta salad today, so this is going to be a fun recipe. I was looking over the recipe before we got started and it's actually really quick and easy. Um, the only thing we really had to do stovetop was to boil our noodles. So I already did took care of that. But before I get into the recipe, why don't we go over some of the um, generals and basics before you start any cooking project. And first and foremost, you wanna make sure that you've washed your hands. So wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, making sure you're getting in between those fingers like so around your wrists, underneath your nails, taking care of all of those secret spots where germs like to hide. Um, so make sure you wash your hands. And then next, I am gonna make sure that I clean and sanitize my cooking space. So cleaning, meaning I've removed any visible debris or dirt and sanitizing, meaning that I've used a disinfectant to get rid of any germs that might be um, sticking to the surface. And then finally, I've gone on and done my mise en place, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys here. So mise en place means we're going to be having our mess in place, as we say, with cooking matters. Um, but it's just having everything set out and ready to go. So I've got everything out. So I'm not having to go through the cabinets as I work through this recipe. Um, this is a really helpful tip if you're using meats or something that might be able to, um, you know, spread bacteria around easily. Uh, just keep that in mind, mise en place. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, to start the recipe, like I said, the only thing I had to do on the stovetop was prep my pasta. So I went ahead and boiled my pasta. I tossed it in a little bit of oil um, just so it doesn't stick together. And then I set that to the side for it to cool for our pasta salad. Now today um, I am using a chickpea pasta and I'm just gonna show that to you guys here. So this is a really great um, alternative for pasta. You can also use like a veggie pasta or a whole wheat. Any of those would be great options for a recipe like this. Oops. Now let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the recipe does call for one cup of cucumber. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with half of this guy and see how, that, how far that takes us. And when I'm getting ready to cut my cucumber, I wanna make sure that I'm practicing good knife handling skills. So that means pinching the blade right here with my index finger and my thumb in the back and then I'm wrapping my fingers around the handle like so. So I have a lot of control and grip with my knife as I'm using it. Then with my other hand, I make a claw and I use that to hold my cucumber as I'm going back or any um, ingredient that I'm using so that I'm protecting my fingers there. Um, I'm moving back with my claw and those two moves together are a really great way to handle your knife, especially if you're a newbie. So one thing I like to note is with an item like this, it's rolling all over my cutting board. So we are gonna go ahead and cut that in half so I have a little bit more stability there. 
Let's go ahead and do that. And this creates a flat surface so that now my cucumber is not moving around. So I've cut my cucumber in half and I'm just gonna set this other half to the side to use in another recipe later on. Um, again, as part of my mise en place, all of my vegetables have already been rinsed. Um, so I'm good to go with that. Just keep that in mind whenever you're using fresh produce or even cans that you're wiping the top there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some slices here. I'm gonna do a dice with this cucumber in the end, um, but I'm gonna just make some slices and I'm gonna do them a size that's comfortable for me to eat. I'll show you what that looks like in the end. Let me show you what my slices are looking like here. Just doing some slices like so. Um, try to put these back in order, although they're not. <laughs> And now I've gathered them together. I'm working my claw, holding my knife, and I'm gonna do some dice chunks here, just like that. Again, you could adjust the size for something that's comfortable for you and your family. Um, we need just about a cup of cucumber. So um, this is actually my one fourth cup. Let me grab my cup out of here. Um, and I just wanna make sure that I'm getting to that cup. If you go a little bit over, that doesn't hurt. Um, there's nothing wrong with having some extra veg. So yes, I have just about a cup here. Let's go ahead and add that to my bowl with the pasta. Awesome. Now I wanna go ahead and work with um, my bell pepper. This recipe doesn't call for a bell pepper, but I have this gorgeous yellow bell pepper and I wanna go ahead and incorporate that in this recipe. As you'll see today, we are gonna be using a lot of um, color. So I'm gonna make sure to incorporate that. Just gonna cut off that bottom, cut off the top here, and then we're gonna go down and cut off our sides. Oops, I missed a section here. And we don't wanna use this right here in the middle with like the seeds and the stem. We're gonna set that to the side you could put that in your broth bag, but um, you know, the seeds can be a little bitter as well as the stem, but you could use it, you know, doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna peel that off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and save these chunks over here. Um, oh, this already disconnected for me, which is lucky, but usually you might have to cut around that or get that out of there. I do wanna make a note if it was connected, you don't wanna just throw the top of your bell pepper like this away. You wanna make sure you're using all of this good pepper that you paid for. We wanna get our money's worth here, especially with something like a yellow bell pepper. Those guys can be even, even more expensive than the green ones. So let's make sure we're using that. Same thing with the bottom. This is all good pepper to use. So again, I wanna go ahead and work kind of a dice situation with that. So I'm gonna start off with a slice, slicing these down like so. Then I'm gonna gather them to get together and I'm going across again to make a little dice there. Now this ingredient wasn't called for for this recipe. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm just adding it in because I had it and it's beautiful. <laughs> and I love a little extra crunch in something like a pasta salad myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Um, so you could use the whole pepper if you needed to or if you wanted to. I'm just going to use a couple pieces, um, not too much though for today. Yolk. I might do just a little bit more of this guy. Now the rest of this bell pepper, I could easily use that for something like in omelet in the morning or any other recipe that I'm using later, doing later on in the week. Um, just keep that in mind. If I was on my own time, I might go ahead and just dice that up so it'll be ready for tomorrow morning. But because I'm on you guys' time, I'm going to save that for later and I'll take care of that in my own time. Um, but that's a great, um, you know, meal prep idea. Like if you're cutting up a bunch of veggies and maybe like something like a pepper or an onion, you could cut it up in advance and then that way it's ready to go um, for future use. So I'm gonna add that bell pepper in there. And I've already got so many colors in that bowl, it's awesome. Then I'm gonna set these guys aside to use for later, cut those up later. And now I'm gonna work with um, some green onions. So this recipe calls for scallions, which are like kind of a mild kind of oniony taste, but very mild. 
Um, and my grocery store at the time didn't have any available. They were out of stock. And I was like, what am I gonna do? But I decided to go ahead and incorporate some green onions because I know them that they're a bit mild too. Um, and then I also had this lovely red onion on hand. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. Um, I do enjoy a lot of onion flavor myself. If you don't enjoy a lot of onion flavor, of course you wouldn't need to add um, as much onion. That's where you know a recipe is really a guideline um, and you can kind of adjust it to um, your own taste and the things that you like. So just gonna be using the tops of the green onion. Um, I know the tops are a bit more mild in flavor than down here. As you get closer down to this white part, it does get a bit stronger. Um, so just keep that in mind for your recipe. And since I am gonna be using that red onion, I'm not gonna cut all the way down to the white. Also, if you um, see here the little um, roots that are coming out, you could put this guy in a cup of water and it'll actually sprout more green onion for you. I love sharing that fact whenever I'm using green onion um, and it's regenerative generative, um, you know, technique that it has. It's so much fun. Um, great thing to share with the kiddos in the kitchen and they'll be able to watch their green onion sprout. So that's an awesome technique. I'm gonna save this for later. Um, I will be using the rest of that though, just not with this recipe. So that's what my green onion's looking like. I'm gonna put that in my bowl. Now let's go ahead and approach this red onions. This is a big guy and I, like I said, I'm not gonna use all of it because I do have some onion flavor coming in with that green one already. So what I wanna do is cut this in half because this guy's rolling all over the place and it's gonna be kind of hard to work with him when he's moving around like that. So I'm gonna just cut him in half like so. And ladies, we do have a question from one of our viewers. Um, is there a nutritional difference between green and yellow bell peppers? Hmm. Well, I'm not exactly sure about the details of that one. I do know that we always say to eat a rainbow, um, which is one way to make sure that you're getting a lot of different nutrients. Um, Julia, do you have the answer for that one? Yeah, actually, um, like you were saying, the eating the rainbow is really important because different colors of vegetables kind of give you a hint of what's in it. So the yellow pepper is gonna have uh, more vitamin C in it than the green one. The green one is still a good source of vitamin C, but as we get into the pepper being riper, cause all a green pepper is, is an underripe red pepper pretty much. Um, so it, it goes from yellow to green, no, green to yellow to orange to red. Um, so as, as it grows and ripens, um, we're gonna get some more of those different kinds of vitamins in there and vitamin C is one of them. They're really similar though. So if, if you wanna use a green one instead, you, you know, use what you have on hand. Awesome, thanks for sharing. I feel like I learned something new every time Julia joins us. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so guys, all I've done here is I just cut off the top of my, <clears throat> of my onion and I'm gonna be um, saving that for my broth bag later. And I am gonna just be following the natural grooves of the onion here and cutting down. So why don't I do that? Um, I am trying to get a bit of a dice here with this guy. I'm gonna be making them a bit smaller. I don't want a huge chunk of onion in this salad. Um, so I'm just gonna make kind of thin slices. Okay, now we're gonna go down with a bit of a dice. All right, and that's all I'm going to do with this um, red onion. I'm just going to add that in to my salad. And I'll be saving the rest of my onion for a later future use. Get all these bits up. All right, and then the final thing that I need to add, um, actually we have two final things, but let's go ahead and get started with our cabbage. Um, we just need about a cup of cabbage for this recipe. Um, so I've got a little chunk of my cabbage here and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Um, with cabbage, I, you know, if you have like these big leaves, um, I do go ahead and use those. I don't see a problem with using them. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this up just because I have the leaves here, making a little kind of a, a roll, a cabbage roll. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice down that. I like a thinly cut cabbage. Um, so I'm gonna go kind of thin with this guy. 
Yeah, and while you're working on the rest of the cabbage there, um, I just want to talk a little bit about food waste. So like you were saying, Sajwa, you're using up some of the stuff that you already had, like the yellow pepper. You definitely don't want to let that go to waste. And so some things that um, some people might not know is that we waste so much food in America. Um, it's estimated that a 30 to 40 percent of the food supply ends up in the trash. Um, and that can equate to about $1,300 per year for a family of food that you buy and then just end up throwing away. So with that in mind, it is really good to, to use everything that you can. And this would be a really good recipe to just throw in whatever vegetables you have left over in the fridge. If you were making like a stir fry for last night, or, you know, you have some carrot sticks for a snack that are left over, anything like that. If you just chop it up, this would be a great recipe to put that in. And then that's again, going to reduce some of your food waste and in the end, end up saving you money because $1,300 a year is a lot. Oh yeah. Just to throw away. All right, you guys, I've finished cutting up my cabbage. Um, so I've added that in. And then um, I did also have some little matchstick carrots already in my fridge. Um, like Julia said, I'm just gonna toss these in. This is about a cup of carrots um, as the recipe calls for. So let's add that in there. And then we are gonna get started on working on our sauce for this recipe. Um, so for the sauce, we are gonna be needing um, one clove of garlic. I'm just gonna clean up my area a little bit. There we go. Um, we need one clove of garlic, and then we are gonna be needing some sriracha, rice vinegar, a little bit of maple syrup, um, and peanut butter and orange juice. And I'll go through those quantities as we get there, but let's start with our um, garlic here. So I'm gonna just lay that guy flat there. I'm gonna put my knife on top of the blade facing away from me. And I'm gonna be using the palm of my hand here to just push down on that garlic and that's gonna crack it, make it easier for me to peel off the skin there. Um, so here we go. Okay, so that's what that's kind of looking like. And then let me peel off this skin, which I will be saving um, for my broth bag. Good. I'm gonna cut off that little nubbin right there um, a little rough part. And I like to save those for my broth bag too. I just actually did a broth and it was so flavorful, my veggie broth, and it was awesome. I was very proud of myself. So you guys definitely save those scraps. So after slicing my garlic, I'm going through with the mincing technique, which we've done quite a few times on Cooking Connected. We, we use garlic a lot over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go through with that mincing technique of my garlic. Um, restarting if I need to, regathering that up into a pile and just going over it again. Um, the more and more that you cut up your garlic, the more flavor is going to be released from it. So keep that in mind. And it might be good to cut it up or mince it up a bit smaller for um, young ones who might be new to veggies and <laughs> might be a little concerned about seeing a chunk of garlic floating around or anything so pretty strong if you get just a whole bite <laughs> yeah it can be pretty intense so we've got that in there okay and now let's go ahead with measuring the rest of our ingredients so we need a one fourth cup of orange juice i've got my one fourth cup and my orange juice here We're gonna add that. Then we also need a one fourth cup of peanut butter. So that's gonna add a lot of protein to this diet, uh, to this sauce. Yeah, and to your diet too, but to the sauce. <laughs> uh, we do have a quick question. Um, for when you're picking out juices for just in general, how do you pick out a healthy juice? Oh yeah, great question. Um, I like to choose a 100% juice. Um, you know, those are great options. You could also do, I know they have like the frozen ones. Um, they also come in 100%, whether they're frozen or not frozen. Um, and that's just a great way um, to make sure that you're not getting too many added sugars. 
I mean, naturally with juice and with fruit, there's sugar in it. You know, that's what makes it so tasty and delicious. That's what we enjoy about the fruit, but you don't want to have added sugars. So extra um, sugar added into that. Um, and, you know, sometimes there are juice flavored drinks, um, things like that, that you kind of have to watch for. Um, another tip that you can do is when you have your 100% juice, you could always water it down just a little bit. Um, and that will help you um, stretch it out, not only stretch it out and save a little bit of coin, but also reduce the amount of sugar that you're putting into your diet when you're um, having juice. Yeah, and that's actually a great tip for kids because they don't, they really don't need it to be that sweet. So if you do, you know, two thirds juice, one third water, even half and half, it still satisfies that thirst for juice, but with a lot less sugar. Yep, I agree. Or, um, you know, one of the recipes we have with Cooking Matters is the raspberry lime fizz. So it's 100% uh, juice with the sparkling water. And so it makes it feel like it's kind of like a soda or alternative. You feel kind of good drinking it. Got that pop and sizzle. So that's a great option too. Really good. <laughs> so I've added my peanut butter in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my um, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. We do have a question. Is there a substitute for the peanut butter in this recipe? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, if, if you want to just avoid peanuts, I think an almond butter would work well in this. Uh, okay. If you're allergic to nuts or want to avoid nuts altogether, I think tahini would be a good choice. That's um, uh, ground sesame seeds. So you can often find that in like a an ethnic aisle of a grocery store or something like that. It's got kind of a similar texture to the peanut butter, a little bit of the same feel, but without nuts. Those are all great options. I was also thinking that a cashew butter might be nice. Yeah. But, I mean, it, that's only if you're avoiding the peanuts, not if you're avoiding nuts entirely. So I'm glad right. you missed those ideas there. Um, I just added one tablespoon of maple syrup to our um, sauce mixture here. So that's in. And now I just need to add my um, one, it says you can add one to four um, teaspoons of sriracha. Um, and that's optional, you don't have to do that. So I'm gonna just start off with one and see how that feels. Um, if you want a little spice in there. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start off with one, see how that feels. And then we're gonna whisk all of these items together. So I just wanna remind you, we've got our peanut butter, we've got maple syrup, rice vinegar, orange juice, sriracha, and then that clove of garlic that we had um, cut up already earlier in our prep. And let's just go ahead and mix that. Yeah, and let's talk about protein for a second while you're working on that, Sajwa. Um, so this recipe is pretty high in protein. The chickpea pasta actually can contribute a lot of protein to your diet. Um, depending on the brand, it can be up to 13 grams of protein. The peanut butter would be, and that's per serving, not total. Peanut butter would be about four grams per serving. And the vegetables, depending on how many vegetables you put in, would probably contribute about three. So that would be about 20 grams of protein total for one serving of this. Um, and the, the general recommendation of how much protein you should get varies with your weight. Um, for example, a 150 pound person, the recommendation would be 54 grams of protein. If it's 200 pounds, then it would go up to 70 grams. But either way, 20 grams is a pretty good chunk of that. Alrighty, so this is what my um, mixture, my veggies, my pasta is looking like right now before the sauce. As you can see, we've got quite a great um, variety of color in there. I've got my yellows. Um, I've got greens. I've got a little bit of white from the inside of that cucumber. Um, reds. You can add quite a few different kinds of vegetables, and this is a great way to incorporate the rainbow into your diet. Um, also, you could, you know, use it as a way to get rid of some of those items in your fridge that are almost on their way out. Mm -hmm. so I'm just mixing that together here, and I'm going to get ready to put on my sauce. So let's do that. Uh, ladies, we have another question from the viewers. Um, I've heard 100% juice, even with no sugar, affects your sugar levels due to removal of the fiber. 
would this negative effect get blunted if you consume this drink with veggie heavy meal with a veggie heavy meal yeah i definitely think so and so as what that's talking about is um whole fruit has a lot of fiber in it you know if you eat the skin of an apple or um, a whole orange has a lot more fiber than apple juice or orange juice and that kind of can control the sugar levels and so it, it juice causes more of a sugar uh, spike in your blood than a whole fruit does so i definitely think that if you're drinking juice with something that's heavy in fiber like vegetables or you know if you have some whole grain like if you're using whole grain pasta in this recipe that would definitely kind of help negate the the spike of just drinking juice Alrighty, so you guys, I have completed my Thai pasta salad. I'm gonna give you a close up there of what that's looking like here. Um, it smells so good, you guys. Um, and it looks as good as it smells. <laughs> Too bad we don't have smell of vision. But that's our Thai pasta salad recipe. Again, it's a really quick one, easy to do, great option if you need to just get rid of a bunch of vegetables at the same time. Um, jam-packed with some protein, so all really great things to include into your diet. Awesome. It looks um, great. It does. Such beautiful colors. I know we got a couple of viewers saying that it looks beautiful. So thank you so much, Sajwa and uh, Julia, for uh, this demonstration. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching today. Um, again, you can find this recipe uh, in the description box as well as in the live chat. So thank you again to Angela with Counts of the World for this beautiful recipe. Um, Please comment below if you end up making this recipe, if you make any changes, if you liked it, if you didn't, we would love to know. Or if you have any other recipe suggestions for our future videos, we're always looking for new suggestions. Finally, if you have a few minutes after um, our video, if you could please take our survey to help us um, continue this work as well as make our videos a little bit better. Here is the program code again, um, which is E, zero nine seven nine three three again the link to that will be in the description box um, in our videos so thank you so much everyone for watching we hope to see you again next week on thursday at 2 p.m thanks everyone